This is the lesson for chapter eight, lesson two. Uh, we're looking at confidence intervals and how to estimate a population proportion using them. So this is a lot like what we covered in chapter seven, lesson two, in that it deals with proportions, a number between zero and one uh, that could be also represented as a percent, so part of the whole. Um, so those are what we're talking about when we're using the rules and everything we discuss in this video. So. I want you to keep in mind that what are the three conditions for estimating a parameter using a confidence interval and how does satisfying each of those conditions allow us to form a confidence interval. So like what do the conditions mean in terms of the problem? Why are they conditions? Keep, keep that in mind because if you can answer that it'll be a lot easier to understand what they are and remember them. Um, so conditions for estimating shape. So just like we've discussed before, the sample size n times the proportion and the sample size times 1 minus the proportion are at least 10 so that we know that our distribution of p hat, our sampling distribution is approximately normal. Uh, center should be the the mean is p so the sample proportion uh, should be an un unbiased estimator meaning uh, all those things we talked about with SRS, random assignment, having a good unbiased experiment to create data that is unbiased so you're, therefore your estimator is unbiased. And then spread um, as long as the 10% condition is met, met, we can apply this formula for standard deviation. Um, the, this whole quantity, p times 1 minus p over n, the whole thing square rooted, will give us the standard deviation of p hat. Now keep in mind, we're using p hat to estimate the parameter now, whereas last chapter we, we talked about already knowing the, the parameter. What you mean, meaning the, the variable we're investigating. This time, we're looking at it more realistically that we don't know what that is. We're using our sample to estimate it. So that's what we're going to be basing this on. So shape, center, and spread. Shape, the, the normal condition. So NP and N times 1 minus P are at least 10. Center, unbiased. So there needs to be an SRS and random assignment. Spread, 10% condition. Don't sample more than 10% of the population. And then we can use this formula down here. Uh, when we say standard error, referring to the standard deviation of a statistic, meaning uh, our cushion of error, how much we could be off by based on the confidence level we're developing. So when we say standard error, we're referring to the standard deviation because that's uh, how much we could be, gives us like a cushion from our estimate, our proportion, how much we could be off by in estimating the true parameter. So we're calling it that um, because it gives us our intervals. So that's the standard deviation how accurate our estimator is. If it's really large, then we don't have a very accurate estimator. Um, since we don't know the value of p, we're using p hat. So this formula that we talked about before had the true parameter times the quantity 1 minus the parameter in parentheses. Now it's p hat. So we're basing that, remember, anything with a, a hat or an accent above is the sample. So x bar is the sample mean, p hat is the sample proportion. So this is the sample proportion that we get, meaning what we get from our average of samples or our approximate sampling distribution times 1 minus that value over the sample size all square rooted. That's what we refer to as standard error. So um, if the normal condition is met, let's talk about 95% confidence interval because that's what we're going to focus on the most. Um, we use the critical value of what's about 2. So we would want um, a value of 1.96 for Z star or 0 0.975. Um, and that's 0 0.975 because keep in mind the values in table A are percentiles. So if we're using a 95% confidence level, that means we're going from here to standard deviations below our estimator to up here. There's our estimator. Remember, it's centered around our estimate or proportion to up here. Now that leaves these two in the tail. So since it's a 95% confidence interval, and it's centered around our estimate in the mean there, we're going to have 0 0.025 down there, 2.5%. So the value here, which is what table A gives us, would be 0.975, because it's the 95% plus this little bit in the tail, since table A is in terms of percentiles. Um, another way to think about it, it's everything that doesn't include the area to the right. So it's 100% minus 2.5%. So that's why it's 0.975 instead of 0.95. Um, which is important to see. We'd use 0.95 if we're doing 90% confidence interval. So take a look at your table A and see if you can figure out, and in terms of this, we'd have 5% on either side. So for 95%, we use Z star as 1.96. If 
for that reason. It corresponds to the 97.5 percentile, um, and that's going to be our critical value. So a one sample z interval um, would give us this formula. So this is combining everything we just talked about, our point estimate, meaning the proportion we got from our sample, plus or minus. That means it could be to the right of the estimator or to the left. The critical value, which would be 1.96 if we're using a 95% confidence interval, times our standard deviation. So point estimate times the value of z for the confidence level that you're going for times the standard deviation that will give us our value. Um, and remember it goes to the left and to the right, that's why the plus or minus is there. So again, sample proportion, point estimate, plus or minus is the critical value for z. We, we'll use 1.96 every single time we're doing 95% confidence interval times the standard deviation based on the sample proportion. Um, so that brings us to solving these problems involving these. Again, state, plan, do, conclude, just like we've done all year. State what parameter p are you trying to estimate and the confidence level. I, everything in red here is the two key parts you have to look at that you need to include. So you're identifying the parameter you want, the confidence level, plan, um, identify your method, what are you going to do, and then check your conditions. Remember the conditions from above for shape, center, and spread. Shape being the 10% condi the normal condition, sorry. Center being the unbiased estimator, meaning random assignment, random sampling and spread being the 10% condition, not uh, sampling more than 10%. Now remember, uh, this condition is the same for sample means. This one changes to the central limit theorem for shape. Those are our conditions. So in the do step, then you perform any calculations. Conclude, interpret your interval in the context of the problem. So that means say what your interval is, but say it in terms of the problem, meaning what the variable, what those values signify. Do they signify seconds? Do they signify you know, whatever the value is you're trying to investigate, the number of fish in a certain lake. So you're saying what your calculation means in terms of the problem. Remember to interpret your interval, you say the confidence level it's at, um, and you want to identify that in many, many samples, so in the long run. You want to make some type of comment about how it's in the long run is what your interval represents. So that brings us to our multiple choice. So uh, your multiple choice question is what is the critical value of Z star we use for a 95% confidence interval and why. Um, so you have five options here. Um, if you're unsure, look back in the, uh, in the video. Please also read over the examples in the book and the lesson in the book before going on and answering that conceptual question, identifying the conditions, um, and to get a good sense of how to solve these problems uh, before coming into class. Also take a look at table A and see what it says about these values so you can get a sense of what I was saying about the true critical value we use for Z star.